Hey everyone, it's Doreen, the Tennessee Vaughn Mom. Great to be here tonight. Um, this is my uh, fun video. It hasn't really been a fun day. It hasn't been a bad day. It's been a tiring day. Uh, this was more of the lighter video, I promised. Um, my wellness journey didn't quite turn out how I had wanted, but I thought I'd jump on here and tell you how it went. I was, the thumbnail said, meet Roxy. Our, uh, we're living our best life on our wellness journey. Well, Roxy is here with me. She may make some noise, uh, but I didn't film her with me. She is on the thumbnail because uh, I didn't go on any walk today. I got too busy with running all my errands. I did um, go and get my, uh, my medication that I needed to pick up from the doctor. I did go to a doctor appointment. I did go... Um, my doctor actually what's really convenient is uh, my pharmacy that I go to to pick up my medication and my doctor uh, my medical doctor my primary care physician um, my therapist my pharmacy where I get my all my medications so I, my I see a uh, nurse practitioner for my medications my psychiatric medications for my bipolar uh, they're all in the same building I kind of decide to have them all at the one stop shop, so to speak, because I always had a hard time um, making my doctor appointments, getting to them. And I just, you know, decided that uh, let's do them all in one place. You know, the, the primary care physician had an office there. It, it was through a place called Access Point. And here in Akron, Ohio, they have a number of different offices and they had one where I go see my, um, therapist. It's a place called Portage Path Behavioral Health and there's a picture of them on my thumbnail as well. And I'll probably talk about them you know, from time to time. And that's where my therapist is as well. And um, so I did a lot of that. As you see, absolutely no makeup, not even any foundation. Usually when I don't put makeup on, I might throw some foundation on, but it's been one of those days. I'm not even dressed up today. Um, just being all natural tonight real because again I don't take myself too seriously I know there are times where I should throw the makeup on and, and look good but tonight it's my wellness journey and I'm getting ready to make my dinner I'm gonna have a ahi tuna salad I plan on having it all done looking nice taking a picture of it and showing it to you that's not how it that's not how it's gonna work um Life just gets in our way and gets fast. I was going to go for a walk in the Cuyahoga Valley National Park and Roxy's moving my tripod and my ring light and got it because she is trying to be right by my feet. I, I, we didn't go for a walk today too. Um, besides being busy, I didn't have her with me because she's just not feeling good today. She's an old girl. She's 14. So there are times where she's just not able to walk real well and I will never exploit my dog. I'll never put her on camera when she's not feeling well. There are times she acts like a two-year-old and there are times when she acts very much like a 14-year-old. So she's going to the vet in a couple days to get her prescriptions refilled for her arthritis and get an ultraviolet, I think it's ultraviolet, um, treatment on her back because she has some kind of disc thing going to. So we'll wait for that. Um, just a second, I need a sip of my my diet black cherry drink that I got from the health food store here in Akron. It's called the mustard seed. They're fantastic. Um, anyway, um, so you got some pictures. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about her in just a minute. That way you can actually meet her without seeing her live. Uh, you will eventually see her live. But um, so um, I did eat healthy today. Um, and I guess with my wellness journey, I'm just going to, I feel like I don't need to have the YouTube community around the world with me on a wellness journey. I can do it by myself. Um, that's something that doesn't need people around, but I like being held accountable. That helps. And plus my son's moving out. He's moving back to Toledo and that's only two and a half hours away. It's not like he's moving across country. Like when he went out to Iowa uh, during the presidential campaign and worked on the Iowa uh, caucus. And then when the caucus was done, he went to Oklahoma for a month. And it's not, so it's not like he's, you know, states away. Um, I can see him within two hours, two and a half hours if I want. Um, 
and even if he was moving across the country, which he may eventually do, it's not that big a deal. I can always talk to him for support, but it's, you know, I'll be living alone again. And doing this kind of feels like I got people with me, even though they aren't with me. It's kind of, it's just kind of fun. This is just kind of fun. And I don't have many subscribers yet. Again, I have 11 and um, I'm, I'll gain some. I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the content I make may not make, you know, may not be for everyone, but I'm hoping some people will enjoy learning about me and my story and watching me as I lose the 50 pounds I gained over this last year. Oh my goodness. I had been so proud of the weight I had lost. I had lost that same 50 pounds the year before and I was so happy. Had new clothes that fit. I can't fit into any of that new clothes now. None. So it'll be real happy to, to fit into it. And I'm going to uh, get up on a lot of new stuff. Um, working on the healthcare stuff. My health care insurance, I had been on Medicaid, and that's gone now. So I've got to get on the, um, go on the marketplace, get some of that. i got to get vision stuff because I need to get my eyes checked. I am a type 2 diabetic, so i got to make sure i got all that health care taken care of, make sure I can keep my insulin. Um, and I'm going to really get working hard on that because I, I want to, I don't want to be insulin dependent forever. I'd like to back that up a little bit. I need, I need dental insurance because um, I need dental insurance. I need dental work done. I haven't, you know, been to the dentist in a while, in a long while, and I need dental work done. And um, so I just got to get some good insurance, and I'm going to have to get it on the marketplace. So that's that. So let me tell you a little bit about Roxy while she's kicking around my ring light. So, Roxy is a 14-year-old puggle. If you don't know what a puggle is, that's a pug and a beagle. Um, she looks similar to a pug. Um, when she was a baby, she looked exactly like a pug. But she, when she barks, she barks like a beagle. She howls like a beagle. When she gets going, she, I mean, she barks a lot. She likes to bark. And I think it's because she likes to hear herself. Um, when we go on trips, she's forever barking at people. She drives our other dog nuts. But... Um, is she, she's mainly telling people, hear me, hear me, hear me, look at me, look at me, look at me, see me, see me. Um, so her bark, our other dog, is one that is more of a dog that people probably, it, it's a Jack Russell mix. Her name is Lady. And it's one that people probably wouldn't want to be around um, too much. She's not the most friendly. And we have to make sure we keep an eye on her that you know because she would bite someone so we don't want we don't we're real careful with her roxy on the other hand somebody puts her hand out she'll jump right up and you know lick it and she's real friendly she barks a lot but it's mainly to like see me see me let me pet you know pat me pet me so that's roxy um i got her from a rescue uh organization i had taken my um my grandma's dog, a cockapoo, uh, to be groomed, and we found Roxy. Uh, I guess I need to back the story up a little bit. Um, I adopted Roxy because we were living with my mother and my grandmother. Uh, my mother and my grandmother helped to raise Jared with me. Um, my son's first name is Jared. Um, and that's all you're going to know. Uh, I was a single mom. I was struggling with my mental health. I was more stable. I'd finally gotten on the right medication in 2003, but I was still struggling and I was on SSDI at the time. Um, and uh, though I had my master's degree at the time, as I said, you know, my life went a different direction. I was working with the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. But, I, you know, the reason my life went a different direction is when I graduated in 98, I was not well enough to take my exam license uh, or my <laughs> license exam. And I just w couldn't do it at the time. And then once I was well enough, I just had really gotten into working with the Depression Bipolar Support Alliance. I was the director for the Toledo uh, chapter and I was president for the state chapter. And I had sat on the national board for six years and I was doing other things and um, 
some people didn't think I should do it, so I just let it go. And when I decided I wanted to do it, it was my it was too far. Too much time had passed, too much had changed, and the counselor and social worker board here in, in Ohio told me I'd need to go back and do a lot of work um, on my graduate you know, program to get current with what needed to be done to be accredited now, um, or to for accreditation to pass my license now. And that's why I'm in school now, because, you know, looking back, you know, looking at my transcripts, everything. So that's kind of digressing off the story. Anyway, um, so my mom and my grandma were helping us. We were living there. Uh, my son was going to uh, All Boys Catholic School in Toledo, and we, everything was good. We were, we were a happy family. Uh, when I was struggling, they were there to help and they were there to help financially. They helped um, pay his tuition. He um, had been in public school, a really good um, public school, but then um, my son and I had joined the Catholic Church in 2000 and um, decided that we wanted to put him in the elementary school where we were going to church. My mom helped pay that and then the elementary school, the parish helped with financial aid. And then when he went to high school, um, we got financial aid from the high school as well. So that's how we were able to afford it because we were not wealthy by any means. My mom was not wealthy by any means. She had worked for the same company for over 40 years, but my mom um, was on disability at that point because she had been diagnosed with cancer in 1999. And although she had been in remission, um, she still was, uh, she still could not work and she was on disability. And um, uh, in 2000, and we thought, we thought everything was good. It was 1990 and in 2007 things, well, actually it was 2005. We thought things were going well. And then the doctor, she started having some problems, went to the doctor and they told her how the cancer came back. It was, um, I can't remember, it's been so long now, but it was a cancer that was in her parotid gland, I think, I don't remember. I'm not gonna say what type of cancer it was if I can't remember. Um, but when they did the surgery and they took it out, it gave her a form of some kind of Bell's palsy. I mean, it wasn't really Bell's palsy, but it made the one side of her face droop, um, her eye drooped, her mouth drooped, and it was permanent. And that was devastating to her because she could never smile the way she wanted to smile. Her face did look very different. And that was very difficult for her, especially, um, I mean, her eye was, you know, really, it was about like that. I can see how it looks and that was about like how that was. And what was very hard is she liked to smile and she liked to laugh. And there were times that she would be around little kids and that would scare them sometimes. And so that was very hard on her. But everybody loved my mom. She was a kind woman. My mom and I had our issues. We really did have our issues. Um, they were all resolved in the end. Um, and I, I'm really glad we did have the time that we had. But um, and, um, the doctor told us at that time she should just prepare. Um, she'd probably have a couple years and we, th we thought, oh, well, we're, we're just gonna, it's not gonna happen, we're gonna keep her. She, she's gonna do fine. So um, my son and I um, had lived on our own. We had lived in apartments and stuff, but uh, we did move back. You know, we had lived with them a couple times, but we didn't, we were living with them at that time. And so we, um, in 2007, uh, well, in 2006, September, my grandmother, who was 91, passed. That was not a surprise because um, she was 91. It was very sad because we were all very, very close and we always had the best time going to the Olive Garden. We would all sit there and just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And, laugh. and people were just always around us, just laughed at us because the four of us were there. We just laughed. Uh, everywhere we went when we'd go for dinner, everybody would just laugh at us. Um, but then my mom started um, having difficulty in not being really herself. And uh, Christmas was a little bit difficult just because she wasn't herself. 
and then she um you may hear some noises the neighbors are in the, off on the side so i um hope it doesn't get too loud uh but she ended up going into the hospital for pain management because she was having a lot of pain and it turned out that it was not good and the doctor talked to me and said that it was time for hospice my mom decided that she wanted to go into hospice not come home uh, she didn't want to be a burden on me and she wanted to go into the beautiful hospice that was in a uh, town close to us which was just on the, you know it would go to the way Toledo is set up there's like the suburbs were like right there and the town was called Perrysburg and she wanted to go into this that beautiful hospice that had like duck pond and everything and so the doctor said that's where he wanted her to go so she went into Perrysburg into the hospice of Northwest Ohio and uh, we got to stay there with her um, we got the beds and um, I take my son to school and I, I'd be there. I, I did everything from there that I needed to do for DBSA and everything I was involved in. Um, I did it right there. Um, and, um, it was rough. It was a rough couple of weeks. And when she passed, we were there with her. We had gone to, you know, and that's funny because hospice kept telling me, oh, she's got time. She's got a couple more weeks. We know this. Believe us. We know this. But I knew, I knew the night before she died, a couple days before she knew, I knew it was close. I knew it was close. And um, they uh, and they kept telling me, no, you you got time. And they allowed us to have, we had a couple dogs at that time still too. And uh, we had my grandma's cockapoo and another dog that we had. And um, they let us have the dogs there. And the dog was in the, the one dog, not my grandma's dog, but the other dog was in the bed with my mom. And I just knew it, time was coming and I told them and they said no. So that morning they, that she passed, they said, go to breakfast, go to breakfast. You know, she's got time. She's got at least another week. So we went to Cracker Barrel and bought a Patsy Cline CD that we could play for because my mom loved Patsy Cline. And they called us and told us, come back. We don't know why, but it's time. So we sat with her all day into the night her pastor came talked to us and um we were there when she passed that night and um it was hard it was really hard as i said my mom and i had a very difficult time growing up and through my life and those are things i may share in videos as time goes on but at the end those two weeks we were able to talk a lot through and I realized that my mom really was my best friend. And I'm glad we had those two weeks together. And, but after she passed, it was very difficult. And I spent six months, practically six months in bed, practically the whole time. My son was miserable. I was not a really good mom at that time. But we took the, one day I took the cockapoo um, to get groomed. Um, she needed to be groomed. Um, I couldn't stay in bed. I had to take care of the dog. Um, I took her to get groomed and there was the rescue place and there was Roxy in a cage with her brother. Looked at her. She's right here by my feet. Yeah. Looked at her and she looked at me and it was true love. I knew right there I had to have her. Didn't have the extra $200 to, to, um, well, I did have the money, but I was I was saving it for something else, something just frivolous that I really wanted, but um, I knew I had to have her. So I adopted her, um, got Mandy, the cockapoo, who was a hard-headed little girl herself. She was about four years old at that time. And um, she was didn't know what to do when, we got, when she came out and there was a puppy. But cool thing about Roxy is when I cried, and still cry whenever I cry. Um, when the other dogs that we've had and one that we still have, um, when Ro when I cry, they run away. Roxy comes to me and senses what's going on and is with me. Roxy is what got me out of bed. Because when you got a puppy, you got to be there. You got to take them out. You got to potty train them or house train them. You got to walk them. You got to be there. You, you're, it's like having a baby. 
your dog is more important than your needs a lot. So the dog got me out. The dog got me doing everything I needed to do for her and for me and for Jared. And sometimes I'm accused of caring more about Roxy than I am about Jared. And that's not true, but Roxy has been there for me. And when um, people always used to say I was gonna have a really hard time when my son moved out, that I wasn't gonna be able to handle it, I wasn't gonna be able to let him go. And I think for, if it wasn't for Roxy and a lot of hard therapy that I've done, it probably would be a lot harder than it, than it was going to be and that it is going to be. Um, I'm the one that told my son to go to Iowa, go, go, take this opportunity and go, go do it. And I did very well. I wanted him to go. I wanted him out of the house and I certainly want him out now. Um, it's time. It's more than time for him to go. It's time for him to do his thing. And it's time for me and Roxy to start this journey on our, on our own. I'm so excited for it. I'm really excited for this journey. Uh, this journey of wellness for me to lose weight and to get healthy because my diabetes has not always been under control. That's been my fault. At first it wasn't because I didn't have insurance of any kind, Medicaid or anything. Um, and I had had a diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, I had had infections in my toe that a couple times that put me in the hospital and I did lose the tip of my toe. At first it wasn't my fault when I didn't have the money to pay for my medications. And then when I did, it was my fault. I have things better under, under better control now, but there's much more I can do and much more I need to do. And if I don't get, if I can't, continue this and continue to work on my health, it will be my fault if, I, if something bad happens. And I can't let that happen. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. It is my fault if I don't lose the weight. It is my fault if I don't get my A1C down. And it has come down a little bit. I'm not going to say what it is right now. I'll say what it, I'll, when I get it down to where I want it, I'll say what it was when I started and where it is. I'm not going to say what my weight is right now. I will say what it what it is right now when I get down some. Um, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I just wanna share my journey with people because I want to be held accountable. And if being held accountable is only knowing that there's gonna be people out there seeing this, whether it's 11 people or 100 people or in time, 1,000 people, who knows? Or just one person. Ah. Um, or it's just me talking to the camera knowing that I'm holding myself accountable. I just want to do this. And I want Roxy along in the journey. And um, there's going to be times that I'm going to be like this with absolutely no makeup. And that means no foundation, nothing. Sometimes I'll have foundation on and that's it. And other times I'll have full makeup on. And that's with all my videos. There'll be Most of the time I'll have more than just this scruffy old scrub shirt. But... Um, I, again, I don't take myself too seriously. I, I mean, I know when it's appropriate to look nice, you know, um, but this was my day of, of wellness journey and um, didn't get to walk, but um, probably gonna do that this weekend because I don't know if there's much Tennessee stuff going on. Um, and I really wanna walk the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I wanna introduce everyone to that. That being said, Shorter video than the last one, more lighthearted. I, you know, I know my my little story about my mom and and Roxy and everything was a little deep, but it was it was better than internet drama. So, but with that, we're gonna have a fun walk time. I'm um, gonna have um, my interviews with um, Brenda, the mother who is raising her grandson. Um, who has an organization, Keys to Serenity. She lost her daughter to the opioid crisis. Tough situation, but she has a fantastic organization doing things for the kids that are left um, behind. And that is fantastic organization. Um, she's made a wonderful thing out of, out of a sad, heartbreaking situation for her. Then next week, I'm, and, and that will be uploaded probably on Monday. And then later in the week, I am interviewing a gentleman named Tug. 
and he runs after him and say, no to dope. This man is a hoot, a hoot. And when I asked Tug if he would let me interview him and put him on my YouTube channel, he said, definitely. I might even do a little field trip. We might do a field trip down to Akron Say No to Dope. Um, they actually have a boutique uh, down in the Kenmore um, neighborhood of Akron. It is a thrift store and um, I might do a little uh, field trip down there just to show you the boutique. I'm, I'm sure most of the people watching this aren't even in Akron, but I do, it is, you know, I did say I wanted to show some things of my, of, you know, places where I live and different things that are great that are going on and, and they're doing some good work and I want to show places that are doing good work. And I also probably on my way down there, I may um, film the I Promise School. That is LeBron James School and the good work he's doing here. LeBron James is a hero here in, in Akron, Ohio. And we are also home of LeBron James, home of the Black Keys. Uh, hope everybody knows who the Black Keys are. And um, right now our, our city has Devo hats around town um, because I wasn't aware, I'm ashamed. Uh, I guess it's not my hometown, so I wouldn't have known uh, that Devo is from Akron and they're trying to promote, you know, trying to lobby for them to get in the Rock um, Hall of Fame. So, hey, Akron's, Akron's a kind of interesting town, an eclectic kind of town. I mean, my hometown is Toledo, but I love Akron. I really do. I'm going to take you around my neighborhood too. I live in the um, neighborhood of Highland Square. It is a very eclectic neighborhood. Um, maybe I'll just go film some of the neighborhood tomorrow, uh, just, just to post filming of the neighborhood. Not really me talking, just put a post out there, uh, of the, a video of just the the sights and the sounds of Highland Square. I mean, it's it's a it's something. So with that, good night, everybody. Um, hope you're getting ready for a good weekend. Bye.